So we have been talking about raga. What then is a raga? Raga, very briefly stated, is an abstract entity. It is an abstract entity and it can be seen as providing a framework that sets the bounds for melody making. It both enables melody making, it also restrains it. So given a certain raga, say Ananda Bhairavi, some melodies are possible within it. it. It offers scope for certain melodies. Some other kinds of melodies are not possible within it. There are many ragas in Carnatic music today, hundreds of them in actual practice and many more exist as possibilities. Now let us look at a fundamental question. How does one create a melody? How does one create a tune? Not everybody can obviously. I mean anybody can hum a little tune but to create a melody which makes an impact on a whole population, that is not trivial. I recently learned that the melody of Beethoven's famous work, Ode to Joy. Now that melody, that melodic line was something, it's a very famous piece and that melodic line apparently took him 20 years to perfect. He had been working on it for 20 years and it took that long for him to perfect. Now ragas are a source of melody, but melody of a very special kind. Now let us try to understand raga. A good point to start this exercise of trying to understand what a raga would be with what eminent musician T. Vishwanathan has to say about it. T. Vishwanathan belonged to a very, very respected family of musicians, a family of traditional uh, musicians and uh, he taught at the Wesleyan University in Connecticut for many years. T. Vishwanathan has this to say about raga. A raga may be defined in simplest terms as a scale in which individual tones are treated with precise and unique ornamentation. Characteristic melodic phrases combined with traditional shapes and gestures or ornamentations which is called gamaka to give form to the raga, the swarupa to the raga. The familiar gestalt of these phrases is built up through a long history of many centuries and is the single most important musical resource available to an artist in grasping the raga and performing it. That was T. Vishwanathan on Raga. Now there are a few key words here. The key words then are tones or swaras, ornamentation or gamakas, melodic phrases, raga swarupa, gestalt of phrases and oral tradition. We will take up one by one each of these key words and try to explore this. Now, before going on to the first keyword, it is important also to note what words are not used here. Now, raga is a, is a word that is bandied about, it is very, uh, everybody has almost has heard of it and there are many things that it is translated into. Raga is sometimes called a tune, raga is called a scale. Now, the, it is important to notice that in this uh, definition, it is not equated with a scale. There is a scale that is associated with every raga, that is true, but a raga is not identical with a scale, there is much more to it. And uh, it is not a tune, it is not a single line of melody, it is not a song. 
The raga exists as a possibility for creating many tunes, many melody, many, many melodies or many songs. And it is associated with a scale, but it is much more than a scale. Now let us take up the first of these keywords. It is swaras or tones. T. Vishwanathan has said that it is defined in simplest terms as a scale in which individual tones are treated with precise and unique ornamentation. So it is a scale with specific tones, specific swaras in it. Now swaras form the skeleton of a raga as it were. The, the bare skeleton of a raga is provided by the swaras. And an important and very fundamental feature of a raga is that it permits certain swaras, certain notes and does not permit some other swaras. So equally it includes a set of swaras and excludes the others and those swaras which are excluded are completely excluded. You cannot use any of the excluded swara just for effect here and there. That is not permitted in classical music. Now let us take uh, a simple and very familiar raga, the raga Mohana. And it is a, Mohanam has a scale that finds presence in other musical traditions of the world too. Chinese music notably has a, has a great use for the scale. And the uh, Mohanam is heavily used in other genres of Indian music such as film music and religious music. The corresponding raga to Mohanam in the Hindustani musical tradition is called Bhupadi or Deshka. There are two ragas that correspond to Mohanam. Now Mohanam sounds something like this. Let me take my Adhara Shatya and I will show you. The swaras are mm, what I just sang. And in this, you have the scale laid out in front of you. The scale of Mohanam is. This is the bare skeleton of Mohan. Now, how do you flesh it out? Though I am mentioning the swaras here, we never sing with the swaras except in the case of a particular kind of improvisation called swara prastara, when we sing a raga alapana, creating melodies. We are talking about how we, ha we are creating melodies with say five swaras of Mohana. Sa 
So we just this set of five notes. So many melodies are possible in the stylized way of Carnatic music. As I said, Sari Gapa Dha Sa Sa Gapa Gari Sa These are the Swaras. Now when you sing Mohanam, you cannot sing Sari Gama Ma is a Swara that does not occur in Mohanam. It cannot be used ever. Sa Gapa Pada Sari You can't sing Pada Sari You can't sing that then you have destroyed the raga. Now these are very, what may be called obvious swaras that cannot be included. There are even subtle movements that cannot be included. Now, <coughs> just to demonstrate how a single note can make a lot of difference. Uh, mm, one day And this is a song all of you must have heard. A.R. Rahman's um, take presentation of Vande Mataram. Vande Mataram. <coughs> now, suppose I were to sing like this. Vande Mataram. Vande have done is both times I have said Padasariga it's the same thing but the second time what I did was Padasariga the ga I have used the other variant of ga and it will create a completely different mood this has a brightness to it whereas it has a, a slight moroseness, a slight a touch of pathos in it. So just one single note can make this difference. And ragas, as we will see, ragas are essentially associated with moods. And they are supposed to evoke moods. And this happens to a large extent because of the Swaras that are used. Now, let us um, listen to Mohanam rendered by Dr. R. S. Jai Lakshmi in concert for our course with L. Subramaniam providing percussive support on the Mridangam. Sit back and 
enjoy this. In our next session, we will take a detailed look at ornamentation or gamakas, which is a very crucial aspect of Carnatic music. <laughs>